everybody kind of mind their business. Let me not lie to you. Since I've been in this car, that I, no matter how well I dress, if I like it, let me ask ah, this video cannot show my sense that I my sense like, let me dress and look good and let me put on my best shoes and my best perfume and walk from here to the end of the road or walk. nobody will say hi excuse me how are you nobody will say hey oh hey beautiful eh, eh. no but people don't toast people in this country what's going on well, now they toast people for this country Hey guys, it's your girl Mimi. So today let's talk about why people are leaving Canada. So you've heard why, or you've probably seen those videos, people talking about why people are leaving Canada and you'd be like, eh, this Canada that if me, I get the opportunity to go, my leg will not leave there last song. <laughs> and you hear that people are leaving, like what is wrong with you guys? Like, is everything okay? <laughs> I'm here to tell you guys, in my opinion, okay, why I do agree with some of the videos that I've watched, um, talking about reasons why people are leaving I also want to add these points to why I think people are leaving Canada okay and yes it is true that people do actually leave you know that I love this country you know that I talk about Canada a lot you know and all the good things that I've been able to achieve in this country so for me to tell you that people do leave it means it's true but let's talk about why okay my opinion here are the reasons why I think people leave. Okay, first it's, I've seen, I think there is an age advantage if you're moving to Canada, okay? So most people that have reached like certain career level in their lives, uh, let's say you are like a director in your own country or a general manager or someone in you know, like a senior executive level kind of person. Let's say you've built your career to that point. If you come here, tendency that you would leave might be high except you've accepted the fact that you are ready to start from you know the beginning again which is why i said there is an age advantage to it because if say i'm already like in my 40s going to my 50s you know wanting to start all over again might be difficult right it's not something that would be easy compared to someone in their 20s and in their 30s they they feel like well I, like i have a lot uh, more time like I still have time to rebuild this career and grow again There's a someone who is already like in their mid 40s going to 50 you know that it's, it's just a matter of 10 years or so you should be talking about uh, retirement and then you're here and then you want to start from the scratch it's difficult and I've seen so many people who from my home country like they already they've worked in top executive uh, positions you know and they just be like okay canada the abroad vibe the jackpot thing or some of them might be oh because of my kids they get here and they realize that uh -uh, this is not the life i want for myself i can't go from a director to a entry level or mid-level position okay so i think most of the people in this category do leave and i know someone just one person in particular that had left um even though they were able to like settle down well here and all of that but they still went back home okay so yeah people do leave and i think one, one of them is you know not being able to start all over again even after they attempt to because some of them do actually do go for those mid-level jobs or you know entry jobs saying you know what we'll find a way but then they realize well i i think it's still better back home for me and then they leave I think another reason why people leave Canada as well is because of cost of living. Um, let me not lie to you. You see that proof of fund that they say you should bring. They are smart and they know why they ask you to. So that money is supposed to be something that helps you settle in for the first six months, assuming you don't get a job. Most people would um, bring that money, okay? And then it will help them, you know, until they find a job or your first few jobs might not be like a good paying job they might be something people popularly call survival jobs and you want to start with those but then tendency to you know you spend the money you came with <laughs> is also still high in your first uh first few weeks or months of settling even if you get a job as soon as you're landing you're going to get accommodation right so you have to pay for rent you have to pay for furniture you have to 
you know be feeding you have to take transportations while you're looking for job all of those things so i think some people as well kind of go to the stream to borrow those funds and they get here and then have to return that fund and then it's so tight because then they can't kind of settle because you don't you didn't come with the fund okay you show the fund but then you had to give it back to the people that gave it to you so now you're here it's difficult it's tight you know your suffering might multiply you might not be in the right state of mind to uh, develop your skills or even you know you just be like did i make the right choice and all of that so yeah cost of living can actually drive has actually you know driven a lot of people to make the decision to go okay so don't don't take it for granted if you're from my home country where people pay rent per year and that rent per year we're talking something three thousand canadian dollar can pay someone's rent for a whole year in in a very good environment in back home and you're here and that's one bedroom one bedroom let's just say one bedroom basement is going for like one two one three one four right now that's just per month you know so we're talking about you using three thousand dollar to get a small accommodation for two months you, you see what i mean so if you do that math over here three thousand might not be like a lot of money but when you come with naira for example and then you had to convert naira to cad and see how your big millions you know get shrinked into a small amount you might be yeah it can get frustrating so yeah do, let me not just stress that cost of living is one of them i think my number three reason why i think people do leave this country is the fact that hmm, you don't have transferable skills and you've not developed enough skills so fine you jump down into canada you've used an agent they packaged you so well you know now you are here you say when you get there when we get there we'll figure it out when we get there we'll hustle when we get there we'll find a way we'll find our way even though i don't like that statement you find your way when you get here now you are here <laughs> a lizard is still a lizard here you cannot come and talk to a crocodile overnight so now you don't have the skills that are in demand and then you start to struggle no job you start saying oh they don't they're not employing people that don't have canadian experience which is a lie because how can all the thousands of people migrating from different parts of the world have canadian experience they of course no, none of them would have but they do value your experience from your home country the difference is what do you have experience in like if your job is in demand it doesn't matter let's say i'm a u.s design person right even if i worked in nigeria as a program designer or as a u.s designer or as a an it specialist it will still be it here do you, you understand what i mean some things will be the same okay if i say python is python if i say sql is sql it's, you know so you kind of understand you get me so the truth is you 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 come here with skills that are not needed or skills that are not so much in demand right so the competition not i don't think there's a skill that will not be useful don't get me wrong even that thing that you think oh like would this be in need i'm sure there are people who do what you do here but the truth is if it's something that anybody can do then the competition for that kind of um skill will be like that means if i post a job you know two thousand people might apply for it right because the skill like anybody can do the job it's not a it's not a skill that is in demand or that is that is scarce you know so a lot of people that inability to upskill or to you know to get transferable skills that you know when you get here you'll be able to do this do that or take this course take this certification do this training and you know kind of move into a different career path you see people who from back home they are like fashion designers they get here they turn to project managers you know people some people have that skill and that ability to kind of transition into a new career path that might be in demand why other people will struggle because let's say all your life you've you have experience in this thing and that's the only thing you know how to do and then you get here that thing that you know how to do is not paying so well or it's not even in high demand or um is <laughs> 
I don't know if I have better words for it. So yeah, that lack inability to to um, transition from the career that you have before to something else is one of the reasons why people get frustrated and people do leave. Another reason why I think people leave is the cultural difference. Okay, let me not lie to you. If you are from my home country, where we are, eh, we are so religious. All the religion, Christians, Muslims, traditional worshippers, everybody go go to go. <laughs> you know, a lot of Nigerians, for example, believe in God. A lot of Nigerians, okay? Most Nigerians, I think it's safe to say that, believe in a higher authority, you know. And so, aside that, our culture as well, you know, African culture kind of... Um, which I think this also applies to other people. Everybody has culture. Indian people have culture. You know, Chinese people have culture. Everyone has culture, you know. Have you seen something that will be so normal in your country and then you get to another country and that thing is so abnormal? You'll be like, uh-uh. This thing is, is very normal now, you know. I... Let me digress a bit. You see when um, Idabasi won the Guinness um, World Record for the Kukaton, right? And those of us from Niger Delta know that that meat i will not mention the name the meat that she ate we know that this thing is is a delicacy right but the way that she when she made a video and had that meat on a platter where season and people are bashing her how dare you that thing is a human companion it's a friendly pet well it is true if you get here in canada everybody has not everybody sorry excuse my language most people or a lot of people do have different animals that they kind of you know have as pe pets so i'm just using that to say cultural difference right so in terms of like when you get here and then you start hearing different ideologies in the schools different ideology you know man can marry man woman can marry man there's nothing wrong with it and you are from a place where you've been told that that is not okay and then you'll be like hmm am i sure I want to be you know so people start having conflicts of interest especially people start having conflicts okay? okay i know that i'm interrupting you but please i do need your help i want to beg you to click on the like button subscribe and don't forget to share this video go through my other videos as well because i have over 106 videos on this channel talking about different topics okay and believe me you you will find them useful most of them you would have paid an agent for it and yeah i'm giving it for free so go ahead and click that like button thank you for example, here where there are different ideologies, people believe there are freedom to do a lot of things that back home, it, there's a law that you can't do it, right? So you get here and you then be like, ah, how is this normal here? Cultural difference. And then you begin to, you know, weigh your option and say, do I want my kids to grow up in an environment where these beliefs and ideology is kind of normal or would I just rather have them back home? So a lot of people do you know cultural differences and all of that make people to leave the other thing i think uh, makes people leave is the tax section so taxes here is crazy you've seen that or i don't know if you guys have seen those videos on youtube where people talk about how crazy it is um, after your income is being taxed in canada they are not lying so there are two categories of people there are one, some that already know that there's tax in canada and they'll be like you know what that's fine i mean i'll just try and get a job that even after they tax me i'll still be okay and then you have other people who had no idea what that taxing mean you just you say shall you pay me okay all right that's it okay now <laughs> let's say you get a job and your salary is 150,000 canadian dollars a year and then by the time you're paid you're actually earning like hundred or ninety thousand in reality after tax okay now that's income tax giving this as an example okay and then you move also to the supermarket you want to get groceries and then you still have to pay five percent gst on those things that you just be like ah, ah, what is really going on here those of us that moved from middle east for example to this place where if your salary is as at when i was living in dubai if your salary is 10 era or sorry if your salary is <laughs> if your salary is 10 dirham 10 dirham is what you will go home with at the end of the day nobody's going to remove anything from it right but then you get here and then your salary is supposed to be like say six thousand canadian dollars a month and somebody is removing 
um and by the end of the day let's just say you're going home with four thousand you'll be like ah, it's not standard if you say you pay me so the reality of seeing that amount being removed from your paycheck for some people when they do the math they probably have better jobs you know from their home country and they just be like no i can't do this another reason as well is the weather you've heard that this weather is cold those of you who are from my own country if you're on social media i'll be like why are you complaining about the weather if it's so cold why don't you come back home and eh? come back let other people go eh <laughs> When they go eat you here, eh? You will, oh, you will speak in tongue. You will ask yourself, did I make the right choice? Is this the life I want for myself? This country is cold, 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 and so cold. Imagine after snow, now you have rain. It's not just ordinary rain. There is also hail storm inside the rain. Ah, what kind of life is this? And then let's not talk about the fact that even the summer, like when is when there's sun, it's very hot. It's it is hot like i'm not even talking is very very you think you are in meduguri or something like it's really hot so yeah the weather for some people some people just never settle into it it could also you know due to health issues on all of that some people just never get to you know come around um the weather i ha used to have my nose bleed a lot you know even it still happens when the weather is extremely dry so everybody's kind of just you know you go to the hospital they'll tell you don't worry over time it will get good but if you are coming from you know nigeria is like all summer weather you know nigeria is just all summer even when it's raining you know it's it's not raining and then you are so cold you know it's just cool you know everything is just the weather wise i i, I would i prefer nigeria weather i'm so sorry i prefer nigeria weather and i also prefer nigeria weather when i was in dubai because that place is the opposite of Canada cold. Canada is so cold, Dubai is so hot. You know, so uh, that's the that's the dilemma that some people actually find themselves here. Another reason why people do leave this country is loneliness. Yes, hmm. people are bored in this country. People are lonely in Canada. Hmm. If you've watched people explain that, you know, when you are coming, come with your spouse, so come with your loved ones, so come with. They are not lying. This, you know, they have. Back home, we have this culture, this community of like, uh, you, you can talk to your neighbor, right? You can, your neighbor might see your child doing something, be like, hey, who are you? Oh, yeah, leave that thing. You know, that kind of thing. Here, everybody kind of mind their business. I'm not like to you since I've been in this Canada and it's over a year plus. No matter how well I dress, if I like it, let me, ah, this video cannot show my sense that I'm, my sense like, let me dress and look good and let me put on my best shoes and my best perfume and walk from here to the end of the road or walk. nobody will say hi excuse me how are you nobody will say hey oh hey beautiful eh, eh. no but people don't toast people in this country what's going on when i know they toast people for this country even without like i'm saying no wedding rings or nothing like you are just walking by people hardly would stop you and ask you out in this country so loneliness boredom is a huge thing okay please stop mingling where you are okay <laughs> because over here i don't know what's going on in my i'm thinking what what could be wrong but then you know here there is, there is law in my opinion no i think the men are scared before someone will say hey excuse me you said they harassed you so oh they will leave you alone the only time I've seen people talk to people is when they are in a group, like um, a group of, um, let's say like a family group or like you guys are having a get together, someone is doing housewarming, you go there, you know, because you guys are in that close environment for over, you know, like after some time people will start talking, people start networking and all of that. Aside that, say you just dress well, just the worker for road. Don't more people know they toast for this country with sin. Ah, ah. So people are lonely. Now let's talk about the single ones here too. Hmm. Cause I had a friend that I was going to invite for us to do this video together, but he's running away. But I'll still find a way to bring him. You you have a young guy, cute, everything, hardworking, has a good job, and all of that. You have another girl, a young girl, cute, has a good job as well. So, you know, so everybody has 
good jobs, right? So now you are like, as a woman, your options, I, I think your, your, as a man, there is more to do now, you right, to, to win the girl over. Because is it a job? She also has a good job, you know, if she, you have money, she has money. So it's not about money now, there's now so many other layers of um how do you what do you call it there are now many criteria many things to take people are very careful do you have debt i don't want you to i don't want to inherit your student debts or your loans or your credit card debts or your you know so people start to because whoever you end up with will affect your life let me not lie to you here, when you marry someone, it's calculated as household income. You want to buy something, let's say you want to do a mortgage, like buy a home. It's going to be calculated based on your household income. So now you don't want to go and put yourself into someone else's situation that does not even have financial sense or ha lacks any financial uh, and lacks financial management skills. So people are really, really, really careful over here who they end up with. And the bar is also very high. You have a job, I have a job. You know, we are busy and busy. It's not going to be like back home where, you know, even though back home as well, a lot of women have jobs, they work, their husband works. But then you can also hire a nanny or a maid or, you know, a chef, someone to help you guys do house chores. Over here, you can't afford it. So you and I will go to work, you and I come back home and start cleaning, start cooking, start taking care of our kids and all of that. So it becomes a lot. So, hmm, my dear, loneliness, Sha, hmm, it's, 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 it's something here, it's something. Everybody now, like, if, if you then, for those that make efforts, you know, to say, you know what, I'm going to just try and push myself out there, you have to get on the dating apps which have its own palaver because so many people they are not serious some of them are just there to catch crews while some of them are serious hoping to get someone that they truly you know so yeah who wants to be lonely especially in their youth so if you are lonely and bored can't find a man or can't find a good woman can't find a man <laughs> can't find a man or can't find a woman you just be like well let me just leave Another reason, okay, and I think I'll end it, even though I, I think I still have about two, three in my head when I'll stop with this one, is the fact that after people get their citizenship, like, some people don't have any... So some people, they'll be like, okay, I'm just going to work hard, get my PR, stay here, be law-abiding, do all my things, and then get my citizenship. After citizenship, so what? Like, nothing. Everybody's citizen, so what's the big deal? And then they'll be like, okay, now that I'm citizen, what am I going to do with, like, all these things that I've been hustling, IELTS, um, proof of fund, all this, my hustle that I've been hustling, do the process for two years, you know? Sell my bro now I'm here after three years now I'm a citizen. What next? You know, that feeling of chasing something and it's like, okay, I have it now. And then there's nothing to chase. People just be like, mm. because the truth is, even if you're a Canadian citizen or you're a non-Canadian citizen, they will not pay you more because you're a Canadian citizen. Nobody's going to pay you more because you have a passport. No. People get paid based on their skill and work experience. So for some people like okay so what's the benefit of this citizenship except for those who already have plans i want to travel the world this person is going to open doors for me i'm going to be able to go see that country that ordinarily they might deny me visa or it might be difficult for me some people might you know want to be able to get into um different you know explore and all of that but if that's not even your plan and you just like if i once i get this passport there hmm, my dear, you get the passport, nothing, nothing, you'll be fine, it's still normal, you know? Okay, I said this was going to be the last one, but I think the next one, and this is like a bonus, is the fact that a lot of people, when they're coming, had false expectations. So you'll be like, mm, when I get to Canada, I would, after two, after one year, I would build two houses, one for my mother, one for myself, I'll buy two Sienna bus. I'll be seeing <laughs> Sienna bus, two Sienna vehicle, take it home, put it on the road. You have all this, all these imaginations, right? Why some people have been able to achieve that? A lot of people are not able to achieve it within that your one year uh, 
timeline okay because when you get here you will realize that your first and your priority is to eat to be able to put a roof over your head to be able to you know afford your just afford your monthly cost of living is is already a challenge now you want to build a house and people from back home as well might have false expectations sometimes depending on the family you're from some families are not like that other families also you are feeding them wrong or and false information so they be like ah, 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 namdi is in canada now after two years he's just going to build us a house you know my son they do you both all those kind of things and then when you get here based on that first expectation one year two years three years five years you've not built any house back home you've not sent any sienna back home you know and then you start feeling like all the things that you even wanted to achieve with the old traveling is not even possible like what are you then doing here you better just go home where you have access to good food food that you're already used to fresh food you know and all of that and Hmm, talking about that some people actually move back home because they get homesick when they leave an environment where they They have their friends all their life families uncle auntie mom dad grandparents and everything they get here I actually do have a friend. that can't stand abroad no matter how juicy this done his masters went back home Like it's not interested to find a job and remain here da, 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 da. It's not like you know some people just can't stay away from people that they love no matter how juicy you make the country sound um some people also can't just get used to the food over here because i'm not going to lie i've left nigeria since 2016 and i'll tell you that uh, <laughs> my best food is still nigerian food like i literally still import nigerian food over here you know and i'm sure that would be the case for people from other culture as well you'd be like ah my indian food is still the best food of course that's what you're used to that's what you know right so some people do get homesick and they just be like mm -mm, it's not worth it for me i'd rather stay back home and you know yeah so i think these are some of the reasons why people do leave right i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like share and subscribe and until then see you in my next video bye